So far we've looked at one dimensional arrays. Usually the information we need to store is more complex. In this case we use two dimensional arrays or 2D lists. These are sometimes called lists of lists. As with simpler lists, with 2D lists we use an index to indicate the position of an item in the list. So you can see here the outer list is the actual individual lists themselves within the main list. Uh, so Joe and 22 would be part of index position zero. Then within that list, you can also indicate where it is within the list. So uh, Joe would be at zero and 22 would be at one. In this example, you have position zero, one and two for the individual lists within the main list results. So Helen 78, 68, 48. Uh, would be the first part of the first list. So that would be index position zero in terms of the outer list. And then within that, Helen would be position zero, 78, one, 68, two, and 48 would be three. So this can be used to find an item in the list, as you see below, uh, where it says print results zero, three. The zero indicates the outer position in the list. So that would be uh, Helen 786848 would be the first list and then three indicates within that list where it would be so it would be 48. Here's how it would look in Python. So we have a, a, a 2D list here. Uh, Joe 22 would be index position zero. Uh, the outer position would be zero and then within that Joe would be zero and 22 would be one. And then we have Celia 35 and Jane 45. Uh, in terms of the, the print statement there, uh, we're looking at the out to position zero, number one within that, which is the second item in the list, which is 22. So when we run the program, we get 22 as our output. Let's do it again now with another set of numbers. This time the print statement says two zero. So this time the outer list two would be the Jane 45 part of the, the 2D list. And the zero would indicate that we're looking at the first item in that list. So when we go to run here, we should get Jane as our output. Let's just see if it works. Yep, there we go. So Jane would be the output in this particular case. We can add a new item to a list using append. As you can see here, we have a 2D list here with the results of Helen, Harry and Tony. This time we're going to append items to the list. So we've got to uh, add their name and add their test results. And once we've added them, we can append them to a new table called new entry. And uh, that will actually append it to new entry. And then we can actually display a new entry uh, at the end of the program. So let's see it in action. Let's enter a name. First test result. Second result and their third result. And as you can see here, we have results for Helen, Harry, Tony, and Joe's been added to our, uh, our 2D list. We can also add a single item to each of the lists within the main list. As we can see here, we have a 2D list. And what we plan to do with this particular list is add an item of data to each of the lists. So we have a fourth test result. We want Helen, Harry, and Tony's test results to be added to their existing lists. So we're going to use a for loop to do this. So we're saying for i in range zero to length of results. So the list is one, two, three long. So it'd be from zero to three. And the first name that we'll use, name equals results i equals zero. This first name here, i will initially be zero. So zero, zero gives us location Helen. That will be the first name that appears, Helen. So it will print that particular name there, display that name, and then it will say test four equals input, enter test four results. So it will say Helen, and then it will ask you to enter the test four result. When you've entered the result, it will insert that result into location four. So it will be after Helen. Uh, so zero, one, two, three, it will be in the fourth location. Here will be the test result. Then once it's completed the loop here, it will go back and it will actually ask you uh, the next person's uh, result. So it will ask you Harry. So rather than having a zero, zero here, it will have a one here. So one zero will give you uh, the second list and it will give you Harry and it will print his name and then ask his test result. Then again, it will repeat it for Tony at the end here. So let's have a go and see what happens. We're going to run the program. 
first it will ask me for Helen's result. So let's type in a result for Helen. It will then ask me Harry's result. Let's type in a result for Harry. And finally, Tony. And as you can see here, the, uh, the result there has been inserted at the end of the list for each of those lists in turn. So basically we've used the loop to go through the names and be able to enter an item into each of the lists and insert it at the end of the list. It's also useful to be able to search for a particular item in one of these two dimensional lists. Let's show you how to do that now. So this particular list, we have Helen again, Harry and Tony, and we have the results of their tests there. We'd like to search for one of the students to find their results. So we can actually use uh, an input statement, search for a name, and then basically we're using a for loop there. So for I in results, so it looks through the results there. If the name is in I, so if you find that particular name in uh, that item of the list, then it will print found. It will also print the actual uh, the actual sublist there uh, for that particular person. So let's run this to see what happens. And let's have a look for Harry. And as you can see, it, it says found there, it's found Harry in the list, and there's his data there. Something else you often need to do is display one of these 2D lists as a table so you can see the results more clearly. Here we have our list again, and at the beginning of our list now we have uh, name, test one, test two, and test three. These can act as uh, headings for our table. And we're saying for I, A, B, C, D, so basically we're looking at each item in the 2D list, so the first list within the list, the second list within the list, the third and the fourth. And we're using the formatting uh, that's presented here, uh, where it says the print statement there, that's the formatting. And we're gonna format A, B, C, and D. So they're presented nicely to form a table uh, from our list. So let's see if it works. We go to run now and run the module. And there we have a very clear list with our results.